Glory to God. Everyone share this broadcast as you're joining on, share this broadcast. I'm going to be on here tonight. This is going to be massive wisdom that I'm giving to you here on tonight. On tonight, it's going to be amazing. If you have your notepad, make sure uh, that you share this broadcast and make sure you have your notepad out because I want you to be able to document the things that I'm teaching on here and retract back to it so that Satan won't defeat you. Oftentimes, God will speak something to us five years before it happens. And then when the five years come, we ask the Lord, what's your word? for my life, and he already gave you the word, but you never documented the word of the Lord. Now, a lot of times, he'll speak to you about something that's gonna take place three weeks later, but you didn't take it serious when he spoke it to you. So, as a result, when the three weeks come, you're asking God, what do you want me to do? He already told you what to do, but you never documented it. I want you to start documenting what I'm teaching because documentation of what God says to you today may be liberation from what the devil does to you tomorrow. Documentation of what God tells you today could be liberation from what Satan tells you tomorrow. I'm gonna say this one more time. Documentation today, documentation of what God tells you today can be liberation from what Satan tells you tomorrow. So you always wanna keep track of what God says and replay it. Your mind is only as strong as what you have remembered God saying to you. That's the only strength of your mind. Your mind is not strong because you say it's going to be strong. Your mind is as strong as your memorization of what God has said to you. If you don't remember what God said to you, you cannot have a strong mind. If you don't remember what God spoke to you, you cannot have a strong mind. Your mind is as strong as what God spoke to you. You have to remember what God spoke to you. And if you don't, there'll be no strength. There'll be no liberty. There'll be no joy. Joy is always connected to a person. You don't just have joy. You have a person that represents the presence of God in your life that allows your joy to be strengthened or validified or a reality to you. Joy is an atmosphere. Joy is a person that does not operate like Satan near you. Joy is somebody that does not operate like Satan near you. Why do you get irritated? Because you have an encounter with somebody that's demonic. It can be a customer service rep. I don't know why people be up there being customer service rep and they don't got no good personality. Uh, I think it was me and my son Juan. We was in Georgia and we went to the window. We asked the lady, we said, y'all got fruit punch? She said, uh, nah. I said, y'all ain't got nothing. Say so you got ketchup now. Y'all got napkins now. Y'all got a cheeseburger. This you got Big Mac. <laughs> Do you got Big Mac? Do you got sign? Do you got sign that's on the picture that you got up on there? 
You got a picture up on here with McDonald's and mustard and all of this stuff. Where's that? She was on the line. I said, no. I said, y'all ain't got nothing all up in there. She told her, well, what am I supposed to do? There's a Dollar General down the street. <laughs> there's a Donald De there's a there's a Dollar General down the street that Judge Joe Brown used to shop at. <laughs> I need over a hundred people to share this broadcast right now. I need over a hundred people to share this broadcast right now. How you call yourself McDonald's and you ain't want to make the Donald's? You ain't got nothing that represent McDonald's here. You false advertising. Y'all ain't got no cheeseburger, no Big Mac. You ain't got no apple pie, no none of that. You ain't got an apple Sunday, no Sunday apple, none of that. Apple, computer, you ain't got none of that. You ain't got no sugar cookie man, no sugar cookie man. How you ain't got no sugar cookie man? <laughs> Saints, you ever heard somebody like on the window, like they talking like they, they a Caucasian person. Then when you go up to the window, you see somebody that you ain't expect to see. I'm like, hey, 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 how may I take your order? I'm like, uh, Amanda, uh, uh, Christine, I want, I want a, uh, I want a McDouble, a big and nasty. All right, a big and nasty in, in a, in a, in a triple double, a Russell Westbrook. And then you get up to the window and then you say, ah, <laughs> they said, what? I saw you on Dr. Phil. <laughs> you that girl that said that you. <laughs> Joy is always connected to a person that carries the heart of God towards you. Joy is always connected <laughs> to, to someone that carries the heart of God towards you. Listen, you cannot have joy around anybody that does not think like God thinks towards you. Do you know why you even love your man of God? Because your man of God will think like Jesus thinks towards you. Your meat 99% of people that will never think the way that Jesus thinks towards you. They'll say, hey, that's just my cousin. Hey, that's just my brother. Hey, we grew up together. No, you grew up with me in the flesh. You never grew up with me in the spirit. My spiritual level is not my fleshly level. My fleshly level, it, it, it deals with carnality and natural stuff. But my spirit level deals with wisdom, with understanding. It deals with God functionality. It deals with faith and love. It deals with endurance and faithfulness, longevity and patience. It deals with truth and grace, strength and, 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 and power. You know, the Bible said Jesus increased in wisdom and in stature. Favor with God and with men. Do you know the wisdom in the stature had nothing to do with his age? Herod was an old man. But he had foolishness operating in him. He tried to kill Jesus. Remember that? So age does not decide wisdom. Page decides wisdom. I have to be on the same page with God. Age does not decide wisdom. Page decides wisdom. Wisdom is the fruit of my attentiveness to the Holy Spirit speaking directly to me or the Holy Spirit speaking to me through someone else. Wisdom is transferable. It can get to you because you listen to Elijah. It could get to you because Moses laid his hands on you. Wisdom is transferable. You that listen to my voice, you carry my same wisdom. Wisdom is transferable. 
A lot of times when you have divine wisdom, people will try to come as if they're mentoring you when really they're just tormenting you because you already know what you need to know for your assignment. I don't need to know everything. I don't need to know how to put on eyebrows. <laughs> That's not my assignment. I don't need to know if your makeup line is 32 or 55 or 45, 47. Because some of y'all look like Mike Epps. Now, look at this. I don't need to know. Saints, I was inside the mall the other day. The lady looked just like Cat Williams. She was mean mugging, too. She wasn't mean mugging me, but she was mad at her child. She looked like Cat Williams in the face. It looked like Cat Williams in the face. I ain't say nothing, but I wanted to tell her. The Cat Williams, is it you? It looked like Cat Williams in the face. But I ain't say nothing to her, but I started laughing. He, he, and then she looked over at me and saw that I was laughing. And I, she looked like she wanted to ask me, are you laughing at me? I was about to tell her because you look like Cat Williams in the face, but I realized that you was a female. So I don't know if... <laughs> I don't... I look like Cat Williams in the face. Joy is connected to someone that has died to their self. Always remember this. Your joy will always manifest when you meet somebody that has died to themselves. Because watch this. They're not selfish. They don't mind seeing you happy. They don't mind seeing you enjoy life. They don't mind seeing you uh, prosper. They don't. Listen, le let me ask you a question. Do you know anybody in your life? And I don't need you to voice it out publicly because some of y'all, your, your siblings is watching this. They're going to get mad if you. <laughs> well, who cares what they got to say? Because some of them look like Cat Williams in the face. <laughs> About two of them look like Cat Williams in the face. Do you know anybody in your life that you know without a shadow of a doubt love to see you happy? Love to see you prosper. Love to see you blessed. If you know who that person is, your loyalty is to that person. Your loyalty is always to the person that wants your God future to manifest. Your loyalty is always to the person that wants to see your God characteristics come through. Your God mentality function. Your God fruits be birth. Your loyalty is to the person that wants to see the blessing of the Lord overtake you. And they're willing to do anything to get the information, the knowledge. Information is the uh the, write this down. I'm hearing the Lord speak this to me. Ma coranto corre ma cara. I'm seeing my angel Irenaeus come to me with a scroll. And in the scroll, it says the hidden, the hidden documentary, documentary, the hidden documentary, the hidden documentary of the wisdom of Jesus Christ. Ma correte, the hidden Documentary of Jesus Christ. The wisdom of Jesus. I'm hearing the Lord speak this to Peladion. Saints, my heart is a notepad. When God writes on my heart, I have to discover which line to read. Not every line is supposed to be read aloud. Some lines are supposed to be meditated. Some lines are supposed to be ate or eaten. Here's why I hear the Lord saying, divine information produces the defamation of a demon spirit. Divine 
na mandolo coste pele dioko rapa coste pele dios here's 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 a ministering of this scroll from the angel here's the word of the lord write this down divine information produces the defamation the defamation the defamation of a demon spirit divine information produces a defamation of an evil spirit so here's what this means when god starts teaching you you become hidden from demons reaching you god's voice destroys the character of evil spirits God's voice destroys the reputation of evil spirits. God's voice destroys the validity of evil spirits. God's voice destroys the credibility of evil spirits. Legion trusted the demons that were on the inside of him until Jesus came on the scene. He trusted them. Their words, their words represented truth to him. But the Bible said when he saw Jesus, he worshiped. What happened? Divine information produces the defamation of a demon spirit. I'm going to say something to you that you might not understand. Malakuzi viantolokos. But I'm hearing Jesus speak this to me. I'm hearing Jesus speak this to me. Divine information produces the restoration of a ministering spirit back to your life. I want you to remember this. I want you to remember this. I want you to remember this. Divine information produces the restoration of a ministering spirit back to your life. An angel. Do you know that the uh, uh, angels... They need you to be restored before their ministry can be restored back to you. If you're damaged, so is the ministry of your angel. If you are damaged, so is the ministry of your angel. Your angel's ministry is damaged. If you are in a backslidden state, your angel can do nothing. They can't work in the atmosphere where the vessel, the child of God, is lazy, uh, non-active. If you're non-active, your angel is not in its ministry. Your submission to God releases your angel. Your submission to God. Your submission to God. If you don't ever submit to God, your angel will never function the way that it was sent by God to function. Your angel will be powerless when Satan and his demons attack you. The angel will have no authority to protect you. That's why you see people all the time. They get hemmed up in situations. There's no protection. You'll see that easily with the story of Balaam. If you watch the story of Balaam, look at how in the story of Balaam, there's no protection for Balaam. If you look in that story, look how he's uh, even being fought by the angel. Think about that. The angel is fighting him. Think about that. Balaam is being fought by the angel. Angels will fight you when you're in rebellion to God. 
remember this statement and always remember it. God will with God will withhold your joy and peace when you're going down the wrong path. I want you to remember this. God will withhold your joy and your peace when you're going down the wrong path. Always remember this. God is not responsible to supply your happiness when you're living outside of the will of God or you're even contemplating outside of the will of God. Are you catching this? I, I want you to see this. When e Listen, contemplation can even invite evil spirits. I want you to see this. I want you to see this. Even contemplation of wrong thoughts could invite evil spirits. There are some demons that move just off of your intellectual functionality. Your intellectual functionality is just your mind. Always remember this and never forget that demons are angels that fallen, that have fallen. They didn't lose their functionality, they lost their position. Understand this. A cop can be fired as a cop. But it can still walk around with a badge on and say, You're under arrest. He can go buy the uniform from the Halloween store. <laughs> or one of them gothic stores. I went to one of them gothic stores. I couldn't stand there because they had a deal on the back. I was like, what? This is not God. I got to get out of here, man. I ain't trying to see. Somebody going to snap a photo with this deal though right here. By, by the t I, I ain't. I got to get up out of here. They're going to snap a picture right there with, with me right there, right side behind. With a deal though, right now, I had to get up out of there real quick. Then the lady, they, them later, then they try to take you to the back town. So you want, you want to buy anything from here? No, I don't need nothing from there. This is not my time. I don't need nothing from there. I I don't need nothing from there. You keep that keep that for the back of y'all. All y'all people that like to you up there want to pick confetti on your neck and all this stuff. What you what you got confetti on your neck for? What is that going to do for you? Get that confetti that's forget it off of your neck. What the hell happening for you? What what's going on right there? I don't know what it is. You got you got doggone mushrooms and all this stuff. What y'all going to camping? Is y'all going camping or what? You got mushroom, mushrooms all in the back. What, what's happening? I don't know. What, is you going to camp? You going to Mount Everest? Because y'all got all these mushrooms in the back. You got fires and stuff. Somebody about to burn. Somebody is about to burn. Up there was trying to get a shirt. <sighs> Had to get up out there. Saints, everything that you get into your hands, make sure that you bless it. If God wants you to have it, you don't want to get something in your hands that's going to eventually curse you. Be very cautious of that. Uh, you don't want to allow stuff to get into your hands that's going to destroy you. Even objects carry spirits. Even objects, if it comes, it can come from a person that does not mean you well. Sometimes you can receive something from somebody you know that don't like you. And you wonder, why Why are they being nice to me? You, That's not always the case. Sometimes God is using them to be nice to you. And that's how God wants, wants it to be. And that's fine. But what I'm saying, it might be somebody from your past. Somebody might pop up out of the blue. You wonder, how come I don't even talk to this person no more? Why are they doing this? You wonder. Huh? You wonder. Then they end up, they're trying to, they're trying to scuba dive you.
and trying to <laughs> You gotta, you gotta investigate why that, why that thing coming to you. That's and try to scuba dive you. You're not gonna grab me. <laughs> You're not gonna grab me. Try to scuba dive you. You gotta be cautious of that as well. Motive is more important than movement. Motive is more important than movement. You can see somebody move in a certain way in the natural, but what's the motive? Motive is more important than movement. It's more important than movement. Find out why that movement is happening. The sons of Skiva, Shiva, Geneva, whatever you want to call it. They were trying to cast out devils and the demons say, Paul, I know Jesus, I know, who are you? The demons responded to the motive and not the name of Jesus. The demons responded to the motive, not the movement. The evil spirits responded to the the motive, not the movement. The evil spirits only respected the motive. Or even, uh, let me say it like this. They only submitted to the motive, not the movement. So if the movement had power greater than the motive, they would have left that body. Because they say in the name of Jesus come out. But because the motive has such power, they stayed in the body of the person. And the Bible said that the demons beat the bricks off of them. Like holy moly donut shop. <laughs> when he lied to Craig and Data and beat the bricks off of him. That's what took place. The demon beat the break off, beat the brakes off of them. All of them, they couldn't do nothing. Imagine you trying to cast out a devil and the devil beat the brakes off of you. That's what happened with the sons of Sceva, the sons of Shiva, the sons of Geneva, whatever you want to call them. Huh? You imagine that. You got to go back home and they say, what happened to you? Why your face swollen? Imagine that. Imagine on that day when they had to, they went to the restaurant. They said, are you okay? You want some ice? What happened? Do you understand how embarrassing that was for the sons? <laughs> Shiva, Skiva, or Geneva, whatever you want to call it. Do you understand how embarrassing that was? That they tried to cast out the devil and the devil Whoop that trick on them. <laughs> Process gives you authority over demons. Write that down. Process gives you authority over demons. Write that down. Process gives you authority over demons. Process gives you authority over demons. You have to go through a process. When you're doing deliverance ministry, you have to go down to hell. You have to unravel the person's soul out of the kingdom of Satan. If you yourself is hell bound, or if you yourself do not have that level of authority, when you go down to hell, it will enter your life. You yourself will encounter the gates of hell 
retaliating against you and you will lose if you do not have process. Process gives you authority. We're not dealing with power. I'm dealing with authority. I'm dealing with legal right from God, permission from God to go forth. You understand this? There are people that minister all the time, but they don't have authority. Because God is not releasing them to go forth. You understand this? And so without the authority, there are spirits that defeat them from the satanic kingdom because those spirits only yield to authority and they know if you don't got none, they can beat you. Why don't you see Elisha doing a lot of things? Because he didn't have the authority to do it. Elisha could have went and started doing all type of stuff, but he waited until he received authority. When did he receive authority? When Elijah said, if you see me when I go. Let me just say this. Seeing me when I go principle is a powerful impartation. Because you receive an impartation Whenever you see your man of God go. And I don't just mean go to heaven to leave the body forever. But I'm talking about even when you see him go into another level of the anointing. When you see him go into another department of wisdom. When you see him go into another realm of functionality. Whenever you see your man of God go, you're receiving an impartation of his spirit when you see him go. If you see him go to another level of favor, if you see him go to another level of uh, grace and glory, all the times that you see him go, look at when Jesus was about to depart. Notice that the disciples had to see him go. The Bible said that they saw him ascending into the heavens. They had to see him go. When they saw him go, the day of Pentecost came, the Holy Spirit fell, and that was Jesus' spirit. But they had to see Jesus go. Every time you see your man of God go into another realm of miracles, signs and wonders, you're receiving an impartation. This is why you have to keep your eyes on Elijah. Because there's an impartation that you're supposed to have. It's scheduled for you. All this week, you're going to be moving in an impartation that's greater than what you had seven days back. A greater impartation than 72 hours ago. A greater impartation than 24 hours ago. It's a different current of Holy Spirit power. Say, Father, I receive a different current of Holy Spirit power. I receive a different current of Holy Spirit power. I receive the streams of the wisdom of God. I receive streams of the glory and the power of God. Authority is so important. Process. Produces authority over demons. You have to go through a process. You have to. You have to. You have to. You have to. You have to go through a process. If you're going to have authority from God over demons, certain demons are strong men demons. Strong men demons will keep you broke. They'll keep you sick in your body. And you'll do everything that you know is possible or that you think is possible. And you'll find that nothing changes. And it can frustrate you. Why am I still sick? Why am I still broke? I'm doing everything I know to do. And it's a strong man demon. A strong man demon will keep you
in stagnation despite your efforts. Remember this, a strong man demon will keep you in stagnation despite your efforts. Let me say this. You have to be very careful. You know why? Because some of y'all, even though you save, you'll follow the patterns of your siblings and people in your family that never made it. You, you got to be very careful because some of you all, after some time, you start taking on those characteristics of people that never reach what God trying to get you to reach. Some of y'all need to hear this like this. You need to shut the hell up and stop doing all the bull crap that you think you should be doing and find out the only stream that God wants you to be functioning in. You don't got time to be going around the mountain trying to get stuff to happen. You wasting your time. When you get confronted with the wisdom of God, you need to stop all these schemes and all these different things to try to make something happen for yourself and only do what God wants you to do. I'm going to say this only to rock you. If you're 20 years old, then you end up 30 and you're not rich. you telling me that you obey God for those 10 years? That's a lie. If the blessing of the Lord comes upon me when I obey God and the Bible said the blessing of the Lord makes me rich. And 10 years later, I still don't got nothing. I'm still, you telling me that you're obeying God? No, you're not. You obeying yourself. Every now and again, you obey God. And that's only when he whoop your donkey. That's only when he let situations get so hard for you that you start saying, ah, okay, I surrender. That's why God got to get you to surrender through a hard situation? Why you can't just surrender just because you love God? See, saints, God didn't have to get me to surrender through hardship. I surrendered because I loved him. Why you got to, uh, why do you have to wait until things go a certain way for you to say, I need the Lord to do something in my life. Saints, have you ever seen people say that when everything is going fine? You only see, I need the Lord to move for me when they are in a hard place. Why you got to wait for the hard place to need the Lord to move for you? You should need the Lord to move for you 24-7. You, you should need the Lord to move for you when you don't see no demonic activity. Why is it that you only need the Lord to move for you when you at your last bit of money or you about to get kicked out of a place? Oh, I need a miracle. I need God to move for me. How about you change your approach from needing God when you're in need to needing God when you're satisfied? Needing God when you're being attacked. Needing God when there's peace all around you. See, your need for God not supposed to be conditional. Though you have made it conditional. Some people only listen when troubles come. Some people only listen when they need a deliverance. Some people only listen when they need money. Saints, God has blessed me. I own more than one place. I own more than one vehicle. I'm an owner. My meetings cost more than most people's annual salary. For two years, three years. God don't have to say, son, I need you to minister to my people. Son, I need you to labor in my word. Son, I need you to release this anointed to people. I'm still 
the same at my work ethic and greater. It don't change because God has made things easier for me. It grows, it increases the more he does for me. Some of y'all not even made it. And he got to press you. <laughs> he got to encourage you. He got to give you 70 promises before you step out. He got to convince you. People be like, oh, this man, he just got so much wisdom. He got so much wisdom, but he ain't got no money. All right. He on the side of the street with 10 cans. He got a lot of wisdom. A whole lot of wisdom he got. The wisdom of God causes you to inherit substance. But listen, you can't inherit substance the way that the world inherits substance. You got to do it God's way or else there's no difference between you and somebody that's serving Satan and he's giving them their stuff. You are a child of God. You have to do child of God things. Those that are led by the spirit, those are the sons of God. Jesus said in John 6 verse 63, the words that I speak to you, they are spirit and they are life. So when it said that those that are led by the spirit, it means that those that are led by the words that I speak to you. So if you're going to make it, into riches and wealth and finances, you have to be led by the words that I speak to you. They are spirit, they are life. John 6, verse 63. Look at Ecclesiastes chapter 4, verse 5. It says, The fool foldeth his hands together and eateth his own flesh. Wow. 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 Did you catch that? Did you catch that? The fool foldeth his hands. He foldeth his hands together. He foldeth his hands together and eateth his own flesh. Wow. Wow. It's talking about a fool here that folds his hands together and eats his own flesh. Now, saints, let me tell you something. I'm going to say something to you that's real powerful here. Do you know that some people, when they pray, they fold their hands? I'm going to take this because I want, I, I, I want to give you some wisdom this week. Do you know that some people, when they pray, they fold their hands? Let me just say this. How many people are praying and at the same token, they're still eating from the flesh realm? They're in the flesh realm concerning their decisions. They're in the flesh realm concerning their relationships. They're in the flesh realm concerning their finances. Their money is in the flesh realm. They're eating their own flesh. The Bible says you can't eat from the table of devils and the table of the Lord at the same time. 
but their hands are folded. I'm taking it to another point of view. They're praying, but they're still straying. And then number two, eating their own flesh. And they're at peace about it. They have their hands folded. 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 And, and what happened is they're at peace about it while they're destroying themselves. Wow. Are you catching this? While they're destroying themselves, they're nonchalant about it. It doesn't even bother them. They're not, they're not aiming at being rescued. They're not aiming at being counseled. They're not aiming at being helped. Is at peace. Wow. And while their hands are folded, they're being destroyed by the devil. They're being destroyed by pride. They're being destroyed. Don't get around a wise man and his teachings and not be wealthy, not be successful, not be prosperous in your relationship with the Holy Spirit. Don't get around a wise man and his teachings and his covering and still never step into dominion, authority, power, grace, glory, and supernatural functionality with your angels, with the ministering spirits that God has sent to you. Because let me tell you something, sons and daughters. Your mouth is a major manifestation of deliverance. And sometimes you need to speak yourself into doing the word. Sometimes you have to say this. I am a forgiven spirit for you to forgive somebody. I am love for you to be unselfish. I am a sower for you to give bountifully. I am a worshiper for you to submit without bad attitude. Sometimes you yourself have to speak yourself into obedience. You got to say out of your mouth what the word of God is requiring of you. I am love so that you can be unselfish. When God puts you in a predicament, he might tell you to do something for somebody that did you wrong and you'll still do it and not hold them accountable. It's not your job to hold nobody accountable. You are a vehicle of representing God and he needs you to show them who he is through your love. I am praise so that you can praise God when you feel depression coming on you. Because the Bible says in Isaiah 61 that he gives you the, 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 the spirit of praise, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. He told you to put on the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. So that means that if you feel heavy, it means that the equation to come out of that heaviness, come out of that depression, come out of that suffocating atmosphere is you have to start praising God. It's not about who hates you. It's not about who's talking about you. It's about you taking on the garment that Jesus gave to your wardrobe for you to praise him despite what's happening to you. You got to go into the wardrobe and put on the clothes of praise. You got to put those clothes on. You got to praise God despite what's happening to you. You asking God to deliver you? Praise him. Your praise would scream deliverance. He ain't got to even hear you. Say, Lord, I need this. Lord, I want this. Lord, do this for me. When you praise him, God will start investigating. What do you need? What you asking for? What do I need to do for you to make you happy? 
You made me happy when you praise God. You enter into his courts. You go into the justice system of Jesus Christ. And he responsible to go and fight on your behalf for whatever has been held up. Whatever has been stopped up. Whatever been cursed in your life. It will be blessed. Whatever been lacking in your life. It will be abundant. Whatever been slow in your life. It will speed up. God will expedite your right. All that covenantal blessing, it coming to you now. I decree and I declare in the name of Jesus, every covenant blessing, every covenant wealth, every covenant prosperity, it coming to you now. But you got to praise God. You got to open up your mouth and stop trying to analyze how you're going to get out of your situation and thank him. Let every breath that Ecclesiastes chapter three, verse two say, there's a time to be born and a time to die. What? You got the authority to speak. You got the authority to decree a thing. You got the authority to say something. You got to praise God when you don't see nothing that you like happening to you. You got to praise him. It's your assignment to praise him. Some people tell us what the Lord want me to do. You, the Lord wants you to praise him. What God asking of me? He ain't asking of nothing. Praise him. You got that authority in your mouth. You better praise God. You better find stuff that he done did for you. Some of y'all ungrateful. God been doing stuff for you. You ain't even praising for that. Oh, what the Lord going to do next for me? I need the Lord to do this for me. He done did all this stuff for you and you ain't praise him. What he look like doing more for you and you ain't even, you ain't even react to what he already did properly. You up there talking, oh, I don't feel right. I don't feel good. I need God to do something for me. He done did so much stuff for you, you didn't even recognize it. How many times he done came and did stuff for you and you just act like, all right. Sometimes God can't bless you because you ain't treating him right. Sometimes God can't bless you because you ain't treated him right. You don't know how to respond to his presence. You don't know how to respond to his favor. You don't even listen, some of y'all, you up there got a privilege to even be around the power, the presence, the glory of God. How many times do you go to God and say, Thank you that I can hear the depth of your word? Thank you that I know things that people don't know that been in ministry for 30 plus years and they still don't know what I found out in three months. They still don't have the advantage over me. When I sit amongst them, I can laugh in my soul because I know stuff that they criticize. I know stuff that they think is foolish. I have an understanding. You know why you're not happy? It's because you don't know how to celebrate God in the now. You're not happy because you are a futuristic person. You don't have any present value on God. You pick God and everything futuristic. You don't celebrate him now. So many times God can take you out of situations you're in, but you don't even know how to celebrate him now. Why? 
Would the teacher promote a distracted student? You caught this? Why would the teacher graduate an ungrateful student? Why? Because the next grade that you get to, you still got ungratefulness. You still distracted. You still don't understand the value of the graduation. You take the graduation as if it's some casual thing. It don't take much for God to become distant with you. Just casualize the fact that you've been given access to be close. Casualize it. Don't celebrate it. And watch how Jesus becomes distance from you. It's your job to stay on fire and have zeal and passion and celebration concerning what the Lord promotes you to, allows you to partake of, allows you to know, allows you to see. It's your job to take those things and use it as fuel Ecclesiastes chapter five says this, verse four, when you vow a vow unto God, defer not to pay it, for he has no pleasure in fools. So we just read Ecclesiastes chapter four, verse five, talked about how a fool folds his hand and eats his own flesh. He's destroying himself and he's still at peace. He's de she's destroying herself. She's still at peace. He's on the wrong path. He's still at peace. She's on the wrong path. He's still at peace. She's still at peace. Not bothered by it. Not making any efforts to repent, convert, or submit itself to what God really wants. Let's go to Ecclesiastes chapter 5 verse 4. So that was Ecclesiastes 4, 5. Now, this is Ecclesiastes 5.4. I want you to see this. You notice that the numbers are backwards in its, uh, in its presentation. Notice that the numbers, Ecclesiastes 4.5. Now, look at Ecclesiastes 5.4. These scriptures are connected. Let me show you something. It says, when thou vowest a vow unto God, defer not to pay it. This means, sons and daughters... If you tell God that you're going to sow your life, your money, your mind, your relationships, whatever you tell God, you're going to pay unto him. It says defer not to pay it, meaning don't say you're going to do it years ago. And now he giving you the chance to do it and you won't do it. God will test us. A lot of times when we in prayer, we hungry for God. We be saying all type of stuff. Lord, if you do, Lord, I do anything. Lord, I surrender all of myself to you. I give you all of me, Father. Lord, use me. I give you all of me. Then when he start using you, oh, I don't like this. Don't waste God's time. Don't waste God's time. Some of you are, are in the harvest of what you've been praying. Don't waste God's time. It says, when thou vowest a vow unto God, defer not to pay it, for he has no pleasure in fools. 
So it's a foolish move to do that. To speak one thing to God and then never even fulfill what you spoke is foolish. Look what it say. Pay, pay that which you have vowed. Pay that which you have vowed. I'm going to say this. Sowing does not deliver you. Sowing into the person that God sent to be soul delivers you. I'm going to say this. Sowing does not deliver you. Sowing into the person God sent as soul delivers you. I want you to see this. Here's the powerful thing about this. There are people, here's what happens. God can send somebody to them and they take sowing and they'll use it to somebody that God did not send to them. So here's what happens. They lose all their money. This is the large percent of people that hate the idea of sowing because they misused it. And when they did sowing, because there's a witchcraft sowing, there is a witchcraft sowing that God refuses to bless. This is where Satan steals your money and gets your money back into his kingdom because you in rebellion towards what God said to you. Is a witchcraft sowing. That's why you see people still broke. Because witchcraft sowing produces loss, not the blessings from the cross. Witchcraft sowing. I want you to hear me. If God sends somebody to me and I'm sowing into everybody else, I'm sowing, but that sowing is not going to deliver me. Is not going to bless me. I'm in violation. Saints, I will never understand. And this is just a random thought because the Holy Spirit was speaking to me earlier. And then when I was taking a shower, which some of y'all don't do, in the name of Jesus, be delivered. I'm joking around. That was just a joke. I'm playing around. Playing around. Some of y'all, you know, you go over to Africa, they don't believe in H2O. You say, probably, how could you? Because I've been there. Them... Man be talking to you, like, hold on, bro. Let's... Hold on, son just died. Wait. Wait, you gotta go. Wait, go over there. Look at it. I think somebody calling you. Look over there. All right, yeah, walk over there real quick. Yeah, you about a mile away. Hey, what you said? I can hear you now. What you said? All right. Okay. Okay. Go see. All right. All right. Go to. St All right. Thank you. All right. See you. Believe in water. Them them type of people. You be happy when it rain. You be like, hey, it's raining outside. Let's let's go get the umbrella. No, nah, we ain't getting no umbrella. No none of that. <laughs> We not getting no umbrella. Not today, brother. Not today, brother. I ain't getting no umbrella for you. Put the umbrella down. You're going to learn today. <laughs> nah, put the umbrella down. you going to get... Nah, I know you's a brother, but you're going to get wet today. I don't know. I know you're very... Listen, you're going to get wet today. Come on. Come on. Come on. Let's 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 wear it out. Come on. Hold on. Uh, uh, Sister, get, get me some soap. All right. Turn your face. Here, brother. Here. Yeah, I ain't, nah, you, nah, you, listen, I, okay, I can, I can bring it back to you when I finish. All right, I can use this soap right here. All right, all right, this soap don't irritate no skin or none of that, right? No, no, no irritable soap, irritable soap, you know, that's irritable soap that makes the skin, you know, ooh, wee. All right, all right. Nah, nah, what you, what you talking about, yeast? Nah, you got yeast, you got yeast effect? Nah, girl, get this thing. 
get this thing back where it came from. Go, go get your brother and bring his soul. Bring some suave or something like that. I don't know what y'all be dying nowadays. I use your perfume soap. What? Bring me some suave or something like this. You got. <laughs> Girl, you burning now. You burning. This is this is not this is, this is not an usher. Let it burn now. None of that. You got an eight thousand stump going on for you. <laughs> now look at this here. It says in Ecclesiastes chapter five, verse four, pay your vows. Sometimes your life not moving financially because you haven't paid your financial vows to the Lord. He can't bless that. I'm going to tell you this because we live in a financial world. I was just talking to a young man. We live in a financial world. And finances decide a major over 90% of things pertaining to our life. Money is a major part of experiencing the blessing. That's why the Bible said the blessing of the Lord make you rich. A lot of times God has not been permitted to make us rich because we have disobeyed financial vows that we made to him. We never paid it. We never fulfilled it. It was in our heart, but it never got in our hand. And whenever we lie and we tell the Lord something and we never fulfill our financial vows, there's a financial curse upon us where we cannot go forth in the financial realm. Listen, I'm going to say this very raw. I'm going to say this very raw because you need to hear it raw. I know that Jesus schedules supernatural money to come to people that so just because they're fulfilling what they promised God, even when they're in a situation where they may need the money in the future. When God is placed first in your financial equation, I know when Jesus schedules financial miracles because I've done it in people in my life. I would hear God say, oh, this person sold this. I want you to do this. I'm talking about even people that I have helped But when people are not so as God tells me nothing about them, nothing. He don't even speak to me one time about them, but only so as and people say, oh, so God only speak to people that give money. He speak very often to people that gives money. People that don't give money, God just listen to their prayers and just be like, all right. Because if you can get money and God's work is not even a part of your agenda, your bills are, all that stuff, all the stuff pertaining to you, because that's what you serve. It's all about you. It's all about you. So let you get yourself out. When what you made all about you does not start working. See, this, this is what a lot of people miss. We like to make it all about us and our families, us and our families. Then when us and your family start messing up, oh God, I need your help. Oh, no, no, no. Deal with us and your family. 
Because it wasn't about God. It was about you and your family. It was about you and your sister. It was about you and your brother. It was about you and your husband. It was about you and your auntie. It was about you and your father. It, it was about you. So let you fix it. If you don't include the Lord, then why are you asking the Lord to come and fix something that he never did? You did it. A lot of times we ask God, oh, fix this situation. God said, you fix it. I ain't going to do it for you. I'm going to tell you what to do. And, and you you handle it. You get your side of the department done. And bam. But see... If I'm sowing, I have involved the Lord in my family, in my affairs, in my personal life. So he has to come through for me because I have involved him in my finances, the very same area where I need him to move the most. So he responsible to, uh, to be Jehovah Jireh to me because I've uh, I've given him my trust. He got to come through. He can't be mocked. If, if, if I'm doing it, then it can fall. But if God doing it, he'll never be put to shame. See, when I sow, I invite the power of God to fix every area of my life. People don't know how to involve God. You leave God out of the whole equation and you want God to bless you. You leave God out of your whole equation. Then you want the Lord to deliver you. To help you. To have mercy on you. Listen to God today. So that when tomorrow comes, you'll have no worries. Bible says, if you save your life, you'll lose it. Do you know what that means? For me to save my life, it means that I'm leaning to my own understanding. I'm doing everything that I think is right. I'm doing everything that I think can protect me. I'm doing everything that I think is going to make my life easier. So when the spirit of God wants anything from me, I say, nope, I'm following what I think is right. I'm going to save myself. I'm going to make sure myself is okay. I'm going to make sure myself is good. And then we get mad when we lose our life. You say, prophet, how do I lose my life? You in debt up to your neck. Sickness fights you. You get destroyed by your enemies. You lose favor, open doors. You end up in the very same place that you was working in yourself to avoid. Wow. Did you catch that? You end up in the same place that you yourself was doing everything to avoid. Watch this, watch this, watch this. You end up in the same place that you yourself, you was following all of your own intellect, your own ways to avoid entering into this place. And you end up in the very place that you was trying to avoid. That's what happens when you save your life. The harvest is you're going to lose it. If the Lord don't build the house, those that build the house labor in vain. How many times do you build with vain labor. God 
God saying I'm not even in this. Listen, you know the foolishness of man and woman is that we pit our heart into doing so many things and we don't pit our heart into Jesus. So when we pit our heart into doing all these things and then when we call on Jesus, we find out Jesus is nowhere in there. And now it's hard for us to let go of the things because we done built our life around it. We done gave our passion, our enthusiasm to it. And so now it's a fight for me to listen to the Lord. And I'm wrestling with the Lord because I done pit all of my emotions into this and it wasn't even what Jesus wanted. Don't build your life around a plan. Build your life around a man. And if you let Jesus, the man of God, you'll find out the plan of God afterwards. Some of y'all not building your life around the man of God, Jesus himself. You building your life around plans and those plans are going to fall because when you get in contact with him, you won't find out that he had nothing to do with it. Don't be foolish. Don't be foolish. Don't be a fool. Don't be a fool. Don't be a fool. Don't be a fool. Bible say acknowledge the Lord in all your ways. All your ways. Some of y'all acknowledge him in some of your ways. Oh, do the Lord, uh, do the Lord want me to pray at this time? Okay. But when it comes to other stuff, you don't ask him nothing. It's just you. It said acknowledge the Lord in all your ways. All your ways. All your ways, all that mean even the stuff you think is irrelevant. This, listen, I ask the Lord what clothes to wear. The Lord tells me what clothes to wear. I ask the Lord for wisdom concerning my hairstyle. I ask the Lord for wisdom concerning my appearance. I ask the Lord for wisdom concerning uh, my cologne. If you ever smell Prophet Joshua Holmes, you is blessed. I'm, listen, I'm, listen, hey, hey, I need a hundred people to share this broadcast. I need a hundred people to share this broadcast. Listen, I don't, I don't need, listen, I need a hundred people to share this broadcast right now. I need a hundred people to share this broadcast right now. Let me tell you something. 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 Let me, let me, let me, let me finish. Let me finish. Let me finish. Let me finish. <laughs> oh, we done killed the pumpkin. Listen. <laughs> we had a jack lantern. Call animal control. I'm telling you that right now. I do it. Don't do it. The, 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 the trunk of light. You. <laughs> it shot you right in the hip. <laughs> Took you out. Have your crit walking. What? Ching! They have one of them Chinese guns. Oh, what could you ching? You got a ching chong sound to it when it go off. What could what could ching ching ching? And, and when it hits you right in the dead in the hip, they have you Kang Wang with it. Kang Wang with it. Listen, I'm dead. Don't don't start it. You have your Kang and Wang with it. You gonna walk over, but you gonna be limping back. Always, always know that love has a side to it that can potentially offend you because those that love you the most will tell you the truth. Rather, tell you what appears to be truth. They'll always say something to you that will kill your flesh to reveal your spirit. I know people 
that they can sit underneath a ministry of a man of God and they'll go join a church. And the man has no anointing. And they do not sow anything into the person that God sent to help them and bring them to the level they are. And they give all their money over to a man that has no anointing, has no substance, has no depth. And they end up broke and God is not behind them. I know people like that. And then they ask, well, what am, what am God asking me to do? <laughs> We're going to give you a piece of gummy bear. That's what, that's what we going to give, give you. One of the, watch it, watch it. Open up your mouth. Open, open up, oh, open up your mouth. Let, let, wait, 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 hold on, hold on. Open up your mouth. Watch it, watch it, watch it. I'm going to love it. I'm going to love it. Wait, I'm going to love it. Open up your mouth. The last time I'm actually open up your mouth because some of y'all ain't saved. Watch it. Ah! Oh, damn, damn, damn. Look at that. <laughs> Don't pitch your mouth open before somebody screenshot you. <laughs> hold on, hold on. You, wait, hold on. You, you got one more? Hey, wait, hold on. Hold on. I'm about to throw one at you. I'm about to throw one at you. One more person open up their mouth. Come on, hold up. Oh, this is, well, wait a minute. Hold on, no, I ain't get it, I ain't get it, I ain't get it, I ain't get it. Hold on, let me finish, let me finish. I got a green one for prosperity. So if I open up your mouth. Oh, there it is right there. Hit you dead in the throat. Saints, don't, don't do your own thing and then come back and tell some, what am I doing wrong? You should have asked that before you did anything. Don't go do your own thing, then come back. Oh, what am I doing wrong? Why this ain't happening? Did you acknowledge the Lord in all your ways and let him direct your path? Did you? So the Bible said, pay your vows. Look at Ecclesiastes chapter five or six. It says, suffer not your mouth to cause your flesh to sin. So if my mouth can cause my flesh to sin, my mouth can also cause my flesh to win. I don't want either of those to manifest. I don't want my flesh to sin. I don't want my flesh to win. Because when my flesh sin, my flesh win. I don't want none of those. So here's what. If... My mouth can cause my flesh to sin and my flesh to win. I want my mouth to cause my spirit to win. Because the Bible said you battle not against flesh and blood. The Bible said in Galatians, I believe it's chapter five, that the flesh warth against the spirit. The flesh warth against the spirit. And the Bible said they are contrary to one another, meaning that your spirit is against your body. Your body is against your spirit. And both you have two kingdoms warring against each other. Remember when Esau and Jacob was in the womb? The Bible said there's two nations warring in your womb. Everybody has two nations warring against each other, your flesh and your spirit. Esau, I have loved. Jacob, I have hated. God hates. No, 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 no. Jacob, I have loved. Esau, I have hated. Jacob, I have loved. Esau, I have hated. Your flesh is Esau. Your spirit is Jacob. Your flesh is Esau. Your spirit is Jacob. Your spirit is. Is what the Lord gets delight in. Your spirit will always be sensitive to God. It'll know when God is uh, displeased. Your spirit will know when God is requiring you to go to another level. Your spirit will always know when God is calling you to do things different. Your spirit is wise. Your spirit is all-knowing. 
Your spirit is a living testimony of the power of God, the glory of God, the grace of God, the person of God. You are God. Your spirit is fully God. Your spirit is fully heaven, is fully divine. Now, here's the crazy thing. Your flesh is fully Lucifer. Your flesh is fully demonic. Let me say this. The mind of the flesh is a demonic realm where I contradict what God wants me to do because I'm trying to save myself. If you look at the word flesh, if you take the H out, and you flip the word flesh around, you'll get the word self. If you take the H out of flesh and you flip it around, you'll get the word self. The mind of the flesh is the mind of self. So when it says that the mind of the flesh, it means that I'm thinking against what God wants because I'm leaning to my own understanding, myself. Myself is my God. So I'm letting myself tell me how to spend my money financially. I don't believe in sowing. I'm letting myself tell me how my money should be dispersed. I don't believe in honoring God financially. I'm letting myself decide how I'm going to treat people. I don't believe that I have to love nobody because I've been done wrong by people. I believe that people have done me wrong, so I'm not going to open up myself to love nobody because myself has decided how I'm going to treat people. But if I leave myself to enter into the spirit, forgive those that you have ought against. You see the correlation, saints? You see why so many people are saying, I don't know how I can forgive somebody after they, after they molested me when I was a child. You see what's happening? They're in the flesh. So they into their self. So anything that's in the spirit, they're contrary to the things of the spirit. My God. Are you catching this, saints? I, I, I'm teaching you so that you can understand it like a little child. I'm breaking down these deep matters and bringing it into eatable packages. Somebody say, I'm packing. Psych, don't say that if you're a woman. I need 100 people to share this broadcast. Now, look at this here. Let me finish. Look at this here. Let, look at this here. Let me finish. Let me finish. Uh, now, let me say this. This is why if the Lord say, your mother and father, your sister, your brother, are those that do the will of the father. The mind of self will tell you, my mother and father is those, this one, this one. My brother, sister is this one, this one. My family is this one, this one. But with the spirit, it's not this one and this one. The spirit will say it's that one and that one. Well, I never met them, Lord, but they are your brother, your sister, your mother, your father. But I've never spoken to them over the phone. 
but they are your brother, your mother, your sister. If I, I was not raised up with them growing up as a child, but those are your mother, your father, your brother, your sister. You see how God even acquainted family according to flesh. I'll say, hey, this is my auntie. Hey, this is my, uh, this is my blood, this, my blood cousin, my blood that. But in the spirit, God weighs out things differently. So in the spirit is where truth is. In the spirit is where truth is. And this is where God will begin to tell you the truth about who is who in your life. But if I'm in the flesh and I have the mind of the flesh, I cannot receive anything that is spiritual because my intellect will tell me who is my brother, my sister, my father, my brother, according to being raised up with them, according to last name. See, to most of you all, I am your father, your spiritual father. You have my spirit inside of you. You have my words inside of you. You have my mind inside of you. You have my anointing inside of you. You have my characteristics inside of you. You have my thought life inside of you. Some of you all have my destiny inside of you. That's why you're so linked to JHM. That's why you're loyal to the ministry, because you have my destiny inside of you. This is what happened to Elisha. He had the destiny of Elijah inside of him. This is what happened to Peter. He had the destiny of Jesus inside of him. This is what happened to Timothy. He had the destiny of Apostle Paul inside of him. This is what happened to Ruth. She had the destiny. Uh, this is what happened to uh, Naomi. She had the destiny of Ruth inside of her. That's why people in the natural won't understand you. But double flood, pluck them. It's just simple. They ain't got to understand because they don't have the spirit to understand it. And they have not been given the right to carry me. I'm too precious to be inside of them. Hey, it smells funny in here. Listen, I'm talking. <laughs> I need a hundred people to share this broadcast, man. I need a hundred people to share this broadcast. I'm talking about spiritually carrying the vision. Spiritually carrying the mantles. Spiritually carrying the nature of Christ. You understand this? So it's, it hasn't been given to them to understand. So you're going to waste your whole day trying to explain it to Mumu the Clown? I'm not going to prepare you to carry a basket from the store if you ain't got no arms. Why would I give you a basket from the grocery store and you ain't got no arms? You're going to drop it because there's nothing there for you to carry what I'm giving to you. Maka talama sokoteleon. Why am I going to buy you a hat if you ain't got no head?
Because the hat not going to have nothing to sit on because there's no head. Why I'm going to buy you a turtleneck if you don't got a neck? Because the turtleneck not going to have nowhere to rest itself when I give it to you. Okay? Why I'm going to buy you glasses if you're blind? Because the glass is still not going to magnify nothing because your sight ain't got no ability to see. So why did I buy prescription glasses for you and you blind. That's what happens when you try to explain the realm of the spirit to those that are in the realm of the flesh. I just gave you the, the, the profound revelation of that because the mind of the flesh is contrary to the spirit. It don't have what the spirit has. The flesh is a darkness. The spirit is light. They are contrary to one another. They're not affiliated in any way, shape, or form. So when you're talking to someone in the flesh, they're not going to hear nothing you say in the spirit. Because it's like giving a grocery uh, a basket to someone that don't got no arms. It's like you giving a hat to somebody that don't have a head. It's like you giving a turtleneck to someone that don't got a neck. It's like you giving uh, prescription glasses to someone that don't got no sight at all. Know who you're talking to and know who to exercise yourself around. I get around some people, I act as dumb as they. I get around some people, I act like I'm the dumbest person in this world. I act extremely ignorant. I act like I don't know nothing. If I get around somebody and I sense, discern by the spirit that they are an unbeliever, and they don't believe that Jesus is Lord or any of that. I just act extremely dumb. Are you a Christian? Uh, no, I'm Judea. I'm Judaism. I'm a Judean. I come from Judah and Zimbabwe at the same time. I'm Zimbabwean and Judea, Judah, Judean. I'm both of them. That's what I am. I'm going to tell you that right now. That's what I am. Well, can I see your passport? Now, nah, I can give you a port to pass. That's, that's a, don't think about it. Don't think about it. Don't try to figure out what I'm saying. All right? Just mind your business. Because I'm from that 504, boys. What? I'm a Master P. Talking about Lil Romeo? Talking about Master Prophet. Oh, that's what I'm talking about. Look at, don't think about it. Um, You get around somebody that don't believe in the gospel, the power of the gospel, don't exercise yourself around them. I, I don't believe that miracles are real. I don't believe at all. Do you believe it? No, I don't believe it. Wait, I thought that you were a born again believer. Yeah, yeah I, I thought too. But you know something that I don't know, so I'm just going to let you teach me. So so when people coming out the wheelchairs, they just coming out because they're trying to stretch their legs, huh? And they find out that the legs is all right. That's what's happening, right? They're trying to stretch because they got a little cramp. They're about to go work out of 24 hour fitness and they're stretching out their bones just to see if the bones is all right so they can go work out, right? I don't know if you remember that story in the Bible where the man was born blind. They tried to turn him against Jesus. And the man, his response to them, they had went go ask the man's parents. Imagine that when people want to discredit your leader, they'll even go talk to people that they think are connected to your life that's not even relevant. That man wasn't underneath his parents no more. This is a grown behind man. But they went go find every single person they think, hey, you connected to them. Let me let me try to turn you against 
The man said to the man said to the leader, uh, the all of them. He said, "I don't know what y'all talking about, this man, but all I know, I was blind and now I can see. All that other stuff y'all talking about, he this and that. I didn't have that encounter." I only can tell you what I had an encounter with. See, some of y'all need to start doing that. Some people say, oh, you know, Prophet Joshua, you know what I'm saying? Uh, you, you know what I'm saying? Uh, uh, you know what I'm saying? Um, um, you know what I'm saying? Um, you, know, you know what I'm saying? Be quiet, Byron. Talking just like a hamster. Going around in circles. I got something to say. I got something to say. I got something to say. You look like Cat Williams in the face. <laughs> you look like Cat Williams in the face. And then saints. Your response should be, that's what you believe. But my encounter, this is what happened to me. This is what happened to me. I'm not deciding off of your broke self. Because you ain't got nothing. That's why you're mad. I know what Jesus did for me. That's all that matters. You can't change me. I'm entitled to my own beliefs. And I believe in Jesus. I believe in his prophet. Bye. Bye, Felicia. <laughs> Felicia Jenkins. Bye bye. Huh? Bye, Felicia Jenkins. Because hmm? saints, let me tell you something. People often criticize what they wish they had. I'm going to say this. I'm going to say this. I'm going to say this. Some of y'all never thought about this. People often criticize what they wish they had. People wish they had a leader that had fresh anointing. Fresh relationship with Jesus. That will labor with them daily. Some people are subject to go to a church on a Sunday and a Wednesday, only a couple hours, you got a man of God that would talk to you the amount of the two days in one session. Did you catch that? He'll teach you at the same accumulation of two days of a service in one session. And he'll do it daily. You have so much more advancement than just a church goer. And somebody that's sitting in a pew underneath a man or a woman that don't have no real depth with God. You think they're not going to hate you? You're receiving manna from heaven. You're receiving the very substance of God into your being. You're graduating at lightning speed. You are knowing things that people fasted years for and they never got. Don't think for one minute that you are not a target for assassination. Don't think for one minute that Satan is not jealous of you. Don't think for one minute that Satan will not plot against you because he knows that you have been given the mystery of God, the privilege of God to know things that are beyond human reach, religious reach, traditional reach. Advancement is your connection to a Moses in the earth. 
Advancement is a connection to your Moses in the earth. Advancement. You advance at the pace of your leader. You advance at the pace of your leader. People will hate you when you possess. Something that God has blocked off from them. People will hate you when you possess something that God has blocked off from them. Remember, no flesh can glory in his presence and you have his presence. No flesh can glory in his presence and you have his presence. Think about this. You have something that they've been blocked off from. Don't think that you are not a target of jealousy. Do you know that one third of the angels hate the angels that are with God today? Do you know that one third of the angels are jealous of the angels that are with God today? They hate the angels that are with God today because they stayed with God while these dummies. That's what demons are. Demons are dummies. Once you get a revelation of that, you'll crush a demon. A demon is the dumbest spirit on the earth. Dummies. Imagine how tormented the one third of the angels are. Every time they see an angel of the Lord working for a child of God, they're mad. That's why they try to get you to say something that's going to mess up the flow of your angel. Remember in Zachariah, Zacharias, uh, uh, Luke chapter one, Zacharias, he began to talk stupid stuff. And the angel got angry at him because the angel, it can mess up the floor of the angel. You start talking dumb stuff. You start saying stuff that's not led by the spirit. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be pleasing and acceptable to you, O oh Lord. You don't want to start saying stuff that's going to interrupt your miracle. You don't want to say stuff that's going to interrupt your finances. You don't want to say stuff that's going to interrupt uh, your increase. You don't want to say stuff that's going to interrupt your health in your body, interrupt the peace of your mind, interrupt the joy of your heart, interrupt the favor that you've been given with a man of God. Imagine the one third of the angels are tormented every time they see an angel of God being a servant to God and serving him. They're mad. Why? Because God don't want nothing to do with those demons. Now they're demons. They have been evicted from the whole arena of God. He has nothing to do with them. He doesn't talk with them. There's no conversation that God has with them in the means of work. He doesn't give them any instruction and say, hey, you know, you go work for my child and bring my child into this. They have no privilege to do that. They are left to fight the angels that have that privilege of working for a child of God. Do you understand the tormenting factor that they themselves were deceived out of being angels of God, powerful beings to being fools, dummies, tricksters. Now they are doing the same thing that was that, that they themselves chose to become. And they're trying to trick as much people into foolishness. Do you imagine that? Don't think and saints, your life will reveal this to you. 
Look at the one third of people that betray God. Don't they always want to connect with you? They always want to come back into your life. <laughs> it's still the same. There's no different. I'm just checking on you, sis. I'm just checking on you, bro. How you doing? And just checking on you. It's the same thing. The one third of those angels that fell, they still want friendship. They still wish that they could be numbered amongst the angels. They still watch God. I got enemies that still watch me. Why you think they can't stop watching me? One third of the angels. <laughs> One third of the angels are still watching what Jesus does. Even though. <laughs> it's no different. It's no different. See. We've been called as a continuation of the God story. We've been called as a continuation of the God story. God allows us to play him in the earth. We'll see the same thing that happened to him happen in other scenarios of our life. He'll let us play out those scenarios. We'll see those things happen to us. Where people are the one third of angels. That turn against you and try to turn other people against you. And then they're still fascinated with you. They can't stop listening to you. They still come to you for a source of wisdom. They still come to you for a source of inspiration. They still come to you for the, for, for the source of direction. Because we're still living out the Bible story. Praise God. Praise God. Suffer not your mouth to cause your flesh to sin. Ecclesiastes 5, 6. Neither say thou before the angel that it was an error. Therefore, should God be angry at your voice and destroy the work of your hands. Always remember this. The Bible says that if you don't have any control over your mouth and you're not saying divine things. You're, you're contradicting the word of God. You're contradicting the plan of God and you're messing up what he wants to do in your life. It's telling you here that God will get angry and you will end up destroying the work of your hands. Are you catching this? You'll end up destroying the work of your hands. You'll end up destroying the work of your hands. You destroying the work of your hands, meaning that here's the wild thing about this son, daughter. Everything that you did is down the drain. It's not even accounted for no more. You destroyed all the stuff that you have done for the Lord. You have destroyed all that you have done. You destroyed the work of your hands. The Bible says this. I'm in Ecclesiastes chapter five, verse five, verse six. Why should God be angry at your voice? See, God can get angry at your voice because your voice is not voicing the word. It's voicing your opinion, your intellect, your own understanding. Are you catching this? Why should God be angry at your voice and destroy the work of your hands? Wow. Wow. Wow, 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 wow. Saints, are you catching this text here? This is a powerful text. This is a powerful text. Let me tell you something. Your words can make you a psychic or a prophet to your destiny. I want you to catch all of this. Your words 
can make you a psychic or a prophet to your destiny. Your words can make you a psychic or a prophet to your destiny. I want you to remember this. I want you to remember this. Your words can make you a psychic or a prophet. You know why? Because let me tell you something. I'm going to tell you the secret about this. If you remember in Proverbs, I think chapter 18, verse 21, it says that life and death is in the power of the tongue. And those that love it will eat the fruit thereof. Here's the secret to this. If I can speak death, I'm speaking as a psychic. You know how I'm speaking as a psychic? Because a psychic has the ability to see the dead. People that have died. That's the function of a psychic, to, is a, a, a dead releaser, a death speaker. That's all the psychic does. It speaks death, the prophet speaks life. So if I ever find myself speaking death, I'm speaking as a psychic. So here's the crazy thing about this. Now I am a psychic to my destiny. I'm a speaker of death. I'm a releaser of death. I live in death. So whenever God is speaking to me, the realm of death is overriding everything that God says. So even what God promised me will be sown into death. And instead of his word over my life swallowing death, if I'm in agreement with death, death will swallow his word. Because the Bible said those that love it will eat the fruit thereof. So if I love death, I'm going to eat the fruit. I'm going to see death come to pass. I'm going to partake of death. I'm going to see death happen. I'm going to see death manifest. I'm going to see death occur. If that is what I love. So you, you, all for the rest of your life, you got the choice whether you want to operate as a psychic or a prophet concerning your destiny. Speak the things that you want to happen that God's word has inspired you to desire because the word of God gives you desires. This is how you believe God for the big stuff. Because the word of God lets you know is okay. The word of God gave you the okay. That is okay for you to believe God for this, that, and the other. So it inspires you to know what is in the realm of life, not death, in the realm of life. It's your job to speak what has been inspired to you from the word. And when you do that, you become the prophet to your life, you become as Ezekiel was when God was using Ezekiel in the text. When God used Ezekiel in the text, remember he told him, go speak to these dry bones. Remember the bones was dry. Remember the bones was dry. This is why I want you to see saints with dry bones. It represent a person. Because Every person has a body that has bones in it somewhere. 
The bones were dry. God sends Ezekiel to people that have dry bones. See, your spirit is the Ezekiel sent to you. Every dry bone in your flesh. Your spirit is the Ezekiel. To prophesy to those dry bones. And to command those dry bones to come alive. It's your job to let Ezekiel prophesy. And when Ezekiel prophesy, you start talking the finances that you want to have. You start talking the, the promotion that you want to have. You start talking the joy, the peace, the health, the strength. You start talking because Ezekiel is your spirit. It's a sign to prophesy to the dry bones in your flesh. It's a sign. Holy Spirit, you are welcome in this place. Omnipotent.
receive your presence. Say, Jesus, I receive your presence. Say, Jesus, I receive your presence. I receive your spirit right now. See, saints, when the power of God comes, you have to be at a level of carelessness yourself. You got to lose your care about this life. I want you to practice this because a lot of times people don't know what it means to surrender. Do you know what surrender means? It means that I become careless about what's not a part of Jesus' agenda. A lot of times, why do people struggle? You're watching something God don't want you to watch. You're hearing something God don't want you to hear. You're seeing something God don't want you to see. I often use this example because I've heard Jesus speak this to me these last couple of weeks of my life. And the Lord told me, he said, son, do you notice the Queen of Sheba? You never act, hear her ask Solomon, how come do you have all these many wives? How come you have all these concubines? How come you got all this money? How come you're wearing this? How come you're living like this? How come your name is Solomon? How come your father is David? How come? How come? How come? You don't see her asking dumb questions because that wasn't on God's agenda. What was on God's agenda was her receiving the wisdom from Solomon that she needed to be queen. And that's all was on God's agenda. If she would have asked Solomon questions, she would have ended up struggling. Because that wasn't the agenda of God. We struggle because we step into things that is not the agenda of God. 
Do you know how to cast down a thought that is not the agenda of God? The queen of Sheba did not have one struggle. Watch how she left the place rejoicing. Watch how she left the place blessed because she did not step into anything that was not the agenda of God. She just stuck with what was the agenda of God and she received what she was supposed to receive from Solomon. When you stay in the agenda of God, say, Father, I received the anointing to stay in the agenda of God. Say it, say it. Holy Spirit, I receive your wisdom to only stay in your agenda, your boundaries for my life. I only receive your agenda. I only receive your agenda for my life. Nothing else. I don't need to know everything else. I only want to know the agenda that you have for my life. I don't need to know everything. I don't need to know everything. I just want to know the agenda. I don't need everything in my knowledge. Say, Father, hide from me anything that I'm not supposed to know. Say, Maka Rapa Costeca Repe Caranto Corramandio. Say, Father, hide from me anything I do not need to know. Hide it from my sight, hide it from my ears, hide it from my mind, hide it from my memory, hide it from me. Anything you don't want me to know. Hide it from me. Say, Father, hide it from me. Hide it from me. I don't need to know it. Keep it out of my ears. Keep it out of my appetite. Keep it out of my desire. Look at Psalm. Psalm 101. Verse 2, Psalm 101, verse 2. I will behave wisely. I will behave myself wisely in a perfect way. When will you come unto me, O Lord? I will walk within my house with a perfect heart. I will set no wicked thing before mine eyes. I hate the work of them that turn aside. That mean people that lead the path that God has for them. I hate the work of them. I hate the work of them that turn aside. It shall not cleave to me. He said, a froward heart shall depart from me. Meaning I'm not going to have nothing to do with things that are not from God. I'm not going to let it get inside of me. I will not know a wicked person. My God. Watch this. I will not know a wicked person. That means I'm not going to hang around people that's twisted. I'm not going to hang around people that's double-minded. Watch this. Look at verse 5. Whosoever slanders his neighbor, him will I cut off. slanders his neighbor him shall I cut off him that has a high look and a proud heart I will have nothing to do with my eyes shall only be upon the faithful of the land keep your eyes on your man of God the Lord is God the Lord is
you are on this line, say, Father, I receive your presence. Makarato sere makarata. Say, Father, I receive your presence. I feel a strong anointing in my hands. I feel the electricity of the Holy Ghost in my hands.
your will be done. I want your will this week. Have your way, have your way, have your way. Give me wisdom while you're having your way. Not to fight you. Not to resist you. Not to mishandle you.
Uh, there's a realm in the spirit, the fire of the Holy Spirit, where you lose control of your body. There's a realm in the fire of the Holy Spirit where Jesus possesses you, where he takes you over. You lose possession of your mind. You lose your life. You lose having the care for things that people care about. The cares of this life die. You don't become irresponsible, but your response is yielded to Jesus. You hear me? You don't become irresponsible, but your response is yielded. You become open. You become uh, welcoming to God. You welcome him stronger. He can have a voice in your decisions, a voice in the things you do and the things you say. He has a voice in the direction that you take. You don't just move aimlessly. You don't just move off of pressure, but he's in control. There's a realm in the fire of God where you're disconnected from your body. You're disconnected from your feelings. The man came to Jesus and said, I want to follow you, but can I bury my father? He said, let the dead bury the dead. You understand this? For Jesus to tell this man this, in the state of this man grieving, for someone that apparently probably was in his life all his life, and Jesus responds to him, let the dead bury their own dead. Come follow me. Jesus doesn't tell him, go take care of your father, then I'll, I'll catch you up, chief. Jesus put him in a crossroads. Either you want this to be your father or you want me to be your father. It was the same thing with Elijah and Elisha. Remember, he went go tell Elijah, I need to go. And I want to tell them by Elijah, like, hey, either you want them or you want me. Which one? Let me tell you something. A man of God will have you choose. A generation call it an occult because they're bastards. They're bastards. Bastards will never understand sonship. Bastards will always mock sonship. Disloyal people will always mock loyalty. Dishonorable people will always mock honor. Rebellious people will always mock submission. Wise, foolish people will always mock the wise. Children of the darkness will always mock the children of the light. Jesus made them choose. Which is your choice? Either you can go bury this man and bury your destiny. Or you can let them bury this man. And I resurrect your destiny. See, here's the powerful thing about this. If that man went go bury his father, he would have buried himself with his father. You never heard it like this. Because I'm hearing the Lord say this to me as I, I've never heard it like this. If he would have went go bury his father, he would have buried his chance at ever encountering Jesus again. Saints, I'm going to say something to you that's real shocking, but you'll catch me because I, I believe that you have enough of my spirit inside of you for you to understand these levels. There are people in white jackets today that miss their encounter with Jesus. There are people walking on the street today, you see them all the time talking to themselves, that miss their encounter with prophetic angels and the Lord Jesus himself. They were supposed to be in the spirit realm. 
talking with angels and Jesus, but they're talking to demons and legions of demons and having conversations with evil spirits. Do you, you ever see a man talking to himself, having a conversation? He's talking to a demon spirit. You can't see the demon, but he can see the demon. He knows what the demon looks like. I met a man like that a couple of days ago. I did give him money. I was going inside a place to get some ribs. <laughs> now, look at this here. <laughs> and while I was walking inside, <laughs> there were about five people that just got hungry. There were about five people that just got hungry. And he was up there. And I, I was talking to the spirit. I told him, what are you doing? He was like, master, no, master. I, I, I'm not doing nothing, master. I ain't doing nothing. It's a spirit. It's, a, it's an evil spirit. All the evil spirits inside of him. There were many. Then he said this. He said, Master, listen, Master, I just I just want something to eat, Master. I just want to eat something, Master. He was a black man. He wasn't, he wasn't Chinese, no none of that. I know y'all hear Master. Y'all think that it's Gaddafi cousin. It wasn't Gaddafi. <laughs> it wasn't it wasn't Gaddafi. And they beat the brakes off of Gaddafi. <laughs> that was a wicked man. You don't understand that man. He hurt. He harmed children. He harmed. They beat the brakes off of that man. Oh, man. I didn't want to see the video, though, where he died. But I did, unfortunately, saw it. They beat the brakes off of that man. <laughs> they Man, that was a town stump, and I'm like, how do the Syrians know how to a town stump? How do the Syrians know how to a town stump? They a town stumped the man. One man did a wrestling move, kaboom! <laughs> they brought him here. They brought him there. Gaddafi was like this. Gaddafi was like this. <laughs> he looked like Muhammad Ali that didn't have a choice. <laughs> <laughs> now, <laughs> now, says, listen, this man was wicked. He tortured women. He, tur he tortured children. He did all type of evil stuff. They had him up like this here. The man brought him here, pow. Then he brought him here. Then he was up there just going like this. Then one of them elbowed him, bam. The other one, eight town stumped him, bam. One man did the stanker leg, bam. Man, it says every dance that you know. Then everybody, then somebody hit the kiki, bam. Saints, the man, they beat the brakes off of him. <laughs> now, here's the crazy thing. And here's the crazy thing. He didn't think that nobody was going to get him. Because, of course, you know, like these wicked kings, they got a lot of protection. They got a lot of uh, security. But it all fell through. Dang, man, they beat the brakes off of that mug. They beat the brakes off of him. Uh, he was like this here. And saints, then they brought him here, then brought him. But it was Bible prophecy being fulfilled. I think Saddam Hussein, they broke his neck. <laughs> hey, hey, they broke. Hey, let me tell you something. Saddam Hussein was the same one doing wickedness. <laughs> hey, Saddam Hussein was doing wickedness. He was doing all type of evil. He was torturing people the same way. They broke, they, <laughs> they broke his neck. They broke his neck. I think, I think it was him that they broke his neck. And saints, what was crazy was the last couple of days of his his court sessions. He was on the top. I'm Saddam Hussein. You're not scared of me? 
I'm to that Hussein. I'm the leader. I'm the man. You're not scared of me. I'm Saddam Hussein. I come, I come after Saddam Hussein. With Saddam Hussein and, and everybody. You go and listen to me. You listen to me. Finish. Let me finish. Let me finish. Let me finish. Let me finish. <laughs> let me let me finish. Let me finish. Let me finish. Let me finish. <laughs> that, that's how that's how that's how it be when you argue with a Latino person. Let me finish. Let me finish. Let me finish, let me finish, let me finish, let me finish. <laughs> I'm letting you finish, I'm letting you finish. Finish. <laughs> they, they have a Latino man playing Jesus in the play. It's also itty finish. <laughs> Went to one of them Latino players, they got Jesus playing, they got a Latino man. <laughs> they got a Latino man who real name hates <laughs> the no, wait, let me finish, let me finish so, Itty Phoenix. <laughs> you be arguing with a man, let me finish, let me finish, let me finish, let me finish, finish. <laughs> So say Saddam Hussein was in there the whole time. <laughs> he was in there the whole time trying to argue his case. Like Saddam, we saw you. And not me. Nothing. Your many brothers. I am Saddam Hussein. But there's a Saddam Hussein that's apart from the Saddam Hussein. It's not me, but it is me. Listen to me. Let me finish. Let me finish. Let me finish. <laughs> so they took some. <laughs> hey, they let him finish, all right. They took the thing, hung him up, I think. <laughs> hey, they took. <laughs> they, hey, they took that thing, that rope. <laughs> they took that rope. <laughs> And they hung him up <laughs> backwards like a bat. <laughs> Say, is that true? I think they said that bats sleep upside down. <laughs> they took that thing, wrapped it around them, and <laughs> they dropped it down <laughs> and broke his neck and he went straight there. <laughs> Say, do you know Saddam was saying still down there? Saddam Hussein is still down there. <laughs> hey, they, they took him, put him on the string, dropped him down, dropped down and got his eagle on, and he went straight to hell. That's it. <laughs> Do you know he's still down in hell? Saddam Hussein is still in hell, him and his sons. They're in hell right now. Do you know how his sons died? His sons died because they blew up the place where they was at, I believe, set them on fire. They was set on fire, then they went down to hellfire. They've been in fire ever since. Man. Oh, Lord, my God. Mm -mm -mm. They still in fire right now. Wow. They live like kings and die like peasants. They in hell right now, saints, in that same fire. You know, I saw, lately I've saw that uh, lady. I saw her in hell. Uh, I don't want to say her name, but y'all know her as a psyche. I saw her burning in hell as well. That lady. Those of you, you know who I'm talking about. I already know her name, but I just don't want to say her name. Burning in hell. And all the demons that occupied her. All the demons 
that occupied her. Huh? I'm trying to tell you. This is real. All the demons that occupied her. They laughing at her. Because she didn't know that she was given an assignment in the satanic kingdom. Let me just tell you this. There, I, I ain't going to name no names. I ain't going to name no names. But there was a TV host. And some of y'all know this man. He was a TV host. And he had a woman that used to call up spirits from the dead. Do you know she was the cause of why he got sick? You understand this? He received demons that left his body in a state that he could not break. Medicine couldn't break it. He couldn't do because she called up spirit and he opened up the door for her to do it. The, that's why the Bible said, do not do that. Don't welcome them uh, psychic mumbo jumbos in your presence. Don't let them come and don't inquire of them. Don't go to no San Gomez. People overseas know what that is, but San Gomez and all this other stuff. And some of y'all got some stuff like that. If your spouse practice that, throw that stuff away. Don't even ask them. Uh, give them a story, whatever you got to do. Throw it out the house and let them say, say, hey, uh, listen, you can't have that around me. Please don't. I, I can't do that. that that's going to welcome spirits from the dead. Get that out. I can't, we can't have that. I'm telling you. Because when, when she would do that, he got affected and he got possessed. With all those demons. Those demons came inside of him. And they began to torture him. And it, it, God told me it was a penalty because of what he did. To even give her a platform to reach people. Because she was reaching a large margarine of people with demonic spirits. Wow. Saints, as a little boy, I used to watch that stuff and be angry like a mug. Now I knew I was angry because my spirit hated the demonic. And so many people were affected by the trickery of Satan. That lady's torment is great. I'll tell you that right now. As I stand in the presence of God, I'm hearing screams right now as I'm talking about it. I'm hearing screams right now. And saints, I'm seeing... A face come before me. Smoke of torment for that is very treacherous. Very torturing. All levels of hell is torturing. But there are uh, specified judgments for certain things. I'm telling you. He became possessed with the spirits that she called up. It affected him. I believe he's still he's still affected today because only those spirits can only leave through the power of Jesus Christ. When evil spirits come, they come live inside of you. They don't they don't they don't budge until the spirit of Jesus Christ drives them out. They don't ever exit that body 
until the spirit of Jesus Christ drives them out. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. Until the spirit of Jesus Christ drives them out.